The Pokemon website PokeShopper has discovered that there's a lot of new Sinnoh-themed merchandise scheduled to arrive next year, 2020. This obviously points as just another hint towards the long-rumored and long-awaited Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes that are probably, well, definitely coming to the Switch very, very soon. And these games are really exciting because a lot of people really loved Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, with most people saying it's their favorite and Gen 4 is kind of where the franchise peaked. So when Game Freak and the Pokemon Company have the opportunity to go back and remake those games, it's obviously going to be really exciting to see what they improve upon. But we actually have uh, five things in particular that we want to see them improve upon. So hey guys, it's Thomas from the Switch Stop and PJ, and today we're going to be talking about five things Things that we want to see in the bound to happen Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes for the Switch. So the first thing we want to talk about is the post-game grind of Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl actually had a pretty interesting um, post-game with the Battle Frontier slash Battle Tower, depending on uh, what version of the game you were on, if you were on Diamond or Pearl or Platinum, but we'd really love to see that expanded upon in the Bound to Happen remakes. Basically, we'd love to see uh, extra levels added to the Battle Frontier, to the Battle Tower, whatever they end up going with. On top of that, we'd just love to see something along the lines of the Master Trainers from Pokemon Let's Go, as those were actually really hard and provided a really interesting challenge because normally Pokemon is all about balancing your team, whereas these Master Trainers were explicitly telling you to level up one Pokemon to its max so you could take on their respective Master Trainer. Something like that would be really interesting and definitely help the post-game grind, which is something Pokemon, in my opinion, has always struggled with at least a little bit, and it's something that would just make the wonderful world of Sinnoh come alive even more. Yeah, that would definitely be a huge improvement that a lot of fans would like. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the Battle Tower slash Frontier when it was first introduced or anything, but I know a lot of people appreciate that, so it would be a good addition. So for our next point, we're going to be talking about how we would like to see all Pokemon from every single Pokemon game in the Sinnoh remake. Now, I'm not sure how possible this could be, but it's just something that I think everyone really wants. One of the biggest complaints of Sword and Shield right now is that the National Dex is not in the game along with all Pokemon not confirmed. So I think that if Sword and Shield turns out not as good as advertised and Sinnoh the remakes can possibly boost that by making the fan base a lot more happier with the Sinnoh remakes along with adding all of the Pokemon in game existence. Yeah, uh, definitely adding in all the Pokemon would be awesome. Um, even if they can't add in every single Pokemon and complete the national decks that is suddenly gone missing this generation, at least adding in a bunch more. Obviously, we'll, we'll get the whole Sinnoh decks. That's that's not a not an argument here. On top of that, they probably will add in the entire uh, Galar Pokédex, which I believe Masuda said does have a fair amount of Pokémon. However, he refused to give a number in the interview, so I mean, a fair amount, that's up to interpretation. But I think over the next few sets of games, we will eventually build up to a full National Dex that will be able to be accessed in Gen 7, um, or Gen 8, excuse me. But uh, right now, obviously, we don't have that, and I'd love to just see them add in more Pokemon, and hopefully they can add them all in by the time um, these remakes come out. But if not, just at least add in a fair amount more than we got in Pokemon Sword and Shield, just so, you know, people don't actually riot in the streets. Alright, so next up we have a pretty interesting one. This would be a pretty uh, drastic change, but stick with me because I think this is a pretty good idea. So anyone who's played Pokemon Diamond and Pearl will probably remember the Distortion World. This uh, really trippy area was... It, it was interesting to see in a Pokemon game, and up to this point, nothing had really been seen like it in the Pokemon franchise. Basically, it was an alternate dimension in Pokemon Platinum that was the true home to uh, Giratina. And if it, it, there will be a screenshot of it up on the screen right now. It's just really trippy. It's, it's trippy as balls and just an interesting 
thing to look at. So in this uh, in this distortion world, we're thinking now they should update it to make it similar to the wild areas of Pokemon Sword and Shield. This means it would be open world basically and have a free camera so that you can move it around 100%. Um, we think this would be a pretty good reason because Pokemon Sword and Shield obviously are having a heavy emphasis on these wild areas, but you can't really add open area world uh, like locations into uh, Sinnoh, which is obviously already a created region with a set layout. So altering the distortion world, I think, would be the next best thing. Yeah, definitely. The distortion world was really interesting, and I think it's going to be really interesting on the Switch being able to have those updated graphics and just making the experience even better which is actually segueing into our next point which is a delta episode for giratina so let me explain so in pokemon omega ruby and alpha sapphire there was an after game event that was known as the delta episode for rayquaza and this was basically created because Game Freak did not have any plans to create Delta Emerald, which would have been the remake to Pokemon Emerald. So assuming that they repeat themselves again, and to be honest, it's pretty smart if they do this, uh, there will not be a Pokemon Platinum remake, but we can put the best features of Pokemon Platinum into the Diamond and Pearl remakes. So it is the best game combined of three. So for the after game, you would possibly go to the distortion world with Cynthia in some sort of event, which, you know, could be whatever. I mean, we don't really know what that could be yet. Um, in Pokemon Platinum, you were going there because Cyrus went in there to go with Giratina. So possibly depending on how they change the story of this game, that could be the same thing or it could be a bit different. But regardless, I doubt they would put Giratina in main game because they already have um, four legendaries, that being Dialga slash Palkia um, as, you know, the covers along with the uh, legendary Lake Guardians, which are Uxie, Mesprit, and Azelf. So I think that core should be enough for the main game. And adding in Giratina at the end with the Distortion World, especially with those 3D graphics, as, as I alluded to a couple minutes ago, on the Switch looking really good. I think a lot of fans would appreciate that as they do prefer Platinum over Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, and another uh, final cool idea to touch on that that you actually tossed around before recording is that as the game progresses and the player gets closer and closer to this uh, Delta episode, whatever it would be called, um, the game world, so like the overall uh, Sinnoh world, like parts of it could become more distorted like the distortion world so maybe there's like a portal that opens up by a tree or maybe um like a section of the ocean you can like kind of see into like the distortion world's darker uh, color scheme that would be pretty interesting and allude to the distortion world uh making a main appearance in the post game and obviously it would just be kind of cool to see this this land Sinnoh that everyone knows and loves slowly kind of being eaten alive by the distortion world obviously it would go back to normal by the end i just think that was a cool idea that you tossed around before recording so i wanted to bring it up so the final thing on our list, and by the way, this list was in no particular order, but I know at least personally, this is one of uh, my top items on the list. I really want secret bases to make a return. So secret bases um, were actually in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Uh, I, I always think of them as being in uh, Ruby and Sapphire, and I guess that's because that's where they originated, but they were in Diamond and Pearl too, in the like secret underground um, area, you could make a secret base. But I wish they were expanded upon in these remakes to even beyond how they were in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. In those games, you could make a secret base anywhere in the uh, in the overworld, in the ocean, uh, in the like deep depths of the ocean after you use dive in caves anywhere there was a spot you could make one and i want that to be expanded to Sinnoh. on top of that this would be a great place to use off nintendo switch online and um just yeah the online functionality or local if they want to go that route and like you meet up with someone both without your switch and you can like travel to each other's secret bases there you should be able to battle friendly trainers maybe even add in like a pokemon a me type training mini game where you can become friends with your friends Pokemon I think that sort of thing would be cool and that secret base mechanic and dynamic would be something really unique I want to see return in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl 
Yeah, I think those are all really great ideas. The best way to make a Pokemon remake is to take the base game that everyone fell in love with and add on new generation type ideas like that you alluded to about Nintendo Switch Online features and multiplayer aspects and all of that good stuff. Yeah, so those are our five main ideas. Um, just to recap, that's better post-game grind in the form of either the Battle Tower or Frontier. Um, all the Pokemon, or at least most of the Pokemon coming back from the National Decks. Then we got uh, expanding the Distortion World into a wild area, uh, open world type spot. The Delta Episode type storyline, which could be, you know, obviously not called the Delta Episode, but that sort of thing. And last but not least, Secret Bases making a return. So those are our five, but let us know your five in the comments down below. Or even if you just have one thing you really want to see return, uh, let us know. We're obviously going to read the comments and we're pretty interested to hear what you guys want to see return in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy that video, then actually pressing the like button means a ton. Subscribe if you are new. I'm Thomas. And I'm PJ. Signing off for now. Peace.